Happy October, my wayward ones, and welcome to my first official Vlogtober video. If you follow me on Instagram, you are probably asking what happened to the September bookish book haul that I promised. Well, the books are still in their box, sitting on top of the October book haul and getting more than a little impatient with me. So I'm going to bring them both together in this video as we go over my fall book haul. But before we do that, let's head to the kitchen because what goes best with a great book than tea and a treat? What better way to celebrate the beginning of October than with a pumpkin-inspired treat? I absolutely love making Bakewell tarts, but I've had ideas floating around for a few years now to create themed ones. One of my favorite fall desserts that I've ever had was made by a friend and co-worker that I worked with way back in my 20s. His name was David, and why, yes, I did have a crush on him. He made us a white chocolate pumpkin cheesecake that made me want to ask the man to marry me. But of course, I was too shy. <laughs> so taking inspiration from that combination, I decided to make a white chocolate pumpkin bakewell tart. I will share the recipe on my Patreon as a free public post, so all you have to do is follow me in order to get access. Eventually, it will also go up on my blog, which I have sadly been neglecting since I created it. The basics are simple. Instead of adding raspberry jam, I subbed pumpkin pie puree, and yes, it's from a can. It's what was left over from the yummy mini pumpkin bread fall cakelets and loaves, ooh, that's a mouthful, that I made in last week's video. That recipe will also be coming to Patreon's free public content and hopefully to the blog sometime this month because the loaves and the stew were delicious or as the kids are saying these days, a chef's kiss. I have to say, I think I actually loved the fall-inspired version of the Bakewell tart better than the original. That said, I only used a quarter cup of the puree for each tart, but definitely could have used more. Same goes for the white chocolate chips and the pumpkin spice that I added. So experiment to your heart's desires.
Now it's time to set the stage. Inspired by Darling Desi, I want to bring a little romanticization, <laughs> is that a word? Well, I guess it is now, to my reading experience. So as I stage the scene, I wanted to discuss how these book hauls are actually part of my Own Your Journey journey. Something weird starts to happen when your online presence is tied to your work. Most people call YouTubers influencers, and when they have large followings, that is absolutely very true. But here's a secret. When you are first starting out, you are more the influenced than the influencer. You start to see which videos are liked more, commented on, engaged with, and it's so encouraging you start to make more content like it. This is not always intentional, trust me, it totally sneaked up on me before I realized it was happening. You start to purchase books to research topics that your viewers might be interested more than you might be. You start to purchase pleasure reading content for the same reason, and in the process, pleasure reading isn't actually all that pleasurable anymore because you're doing it for the wrong reasons. I have an insane amount of books that I purchased because I thought my viewers would appreciate it, but this time, these books are the ones I have had on my own wish list. I took back control of my reading journey and am, as a result, beyond excited to share this haul with you. The first four books speak to the girl inside who loved the beginning of September because not just did it mean fall was around the corner, it meant a new school year was starting. I loved school. I loved books and studying and reading for fun. So it's not a huge surprise I would be drawn to books about books. Now, full disclosure, when I had to head into the city for an appointment in August, I did take this first one with me and hated putting it back in the box because I'm already hooked. It's called The Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams. Esme is born into a world of words. Motherless and irrepressibly curious, she spends her childhood in the scriptorium, an Oxford garden shed in which her father and a team of dedicated lexographers are collecting words for the very first Oxford English Dictionary. Young Esme's place is beneath the sorting table, unseen and unheard. One day, a slip of paper containing the word bond maid flutters beneath the table. She rescues the slip and learns that the word means slave girl. She begins to collect other words that have been discarded or neglected by the dictionary men. As she grows up, Esme realizes that words and meanings relating to women's and common folks' experiences often go unrecorded, and so she begins in earnest to search out words for her own dictionary, the Dictionary of Lost Words. To do so, she must leave the sheltered world of the university and venture out to meet the people whose words will fill those pages. Set during the height of the women's suffrage movement and with the Great War looming, the Dictionary of Lost Words reveals a lost narrative hidden between the lines of a history written by men. It's inspired by actual events. Author Pip Williams has delved into the archives of the Oxford English Dictionary to tell this highly original story. Now, personally, the first few pages totally drew me in. I don't want to give out any spoilers, but little Esme and her father, so far at least, have both captured my heart and given me all the feels from sadness to compassion to love and patience. This book has been on my wish list for a while, and I'm really excited to finally have it. It will definitely be the first of all of these books that I shall read. The second bookish book is The Binding by Bridget Collins. I was extremely intrigued by the magical potential bound within this offering. Imagine you could erase grief. Imagine you could remove pain. Imagine you could hide the darkest, most horrifying secret forever. Young Emmett Farmer is working in the fields when a strange letter arrives summoning him away from his family. He is to begin an apprenticeship as a bookbinder, a vocation that arouses fear, suspicion, and prejudice amongst their small community, but one neither he nor his parents can afford to refuse. For as long as he can recall, Emmett has been drawn to books, even though they are strictly forbidden. 
Once he arrives for his apprenticeship, his mentor, Serdith, informs him that bookbinding is a sacred calling, and he is a binder born. Under the old woman's watchful eye, Emmett learns to handcraft the elegant leather-bound volumes. Within each one, they will capture something unique and extraordinary, a memory. If there's something you want to forget, a binder can help. If there's something you need to erase, they can assist. Within the pages of the books they create, secrets are concealed and the past is locked away. In a vault under his mentor's workshop, rows upon rows of books are meticulously stored. But while Serdith is an artisan, there are others of their kind, amoral tradesmen, who use their talents for dark ends. And just as Emmett begins to settle into his new circumstances, he makes an astonishing discovery. One of the books has his name on it. Soon, everything he thought he understood about his life will be dramatically rewritten. The book is described as an unforgettable novel of enchantment, mystery, memory, and forbidden love. The binding is a beautiful homage to the allure and life-changing power of books, and a reminder to us all that knowledge can be its own kind of magic. And it personally has me excited and very, very curious. The final bookish book in the haul is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I was a little on the fence about this book, as the reviews I've seen indicated the protagonist of the story either tries to or is contemplating committing suicide. Now I'm sharing this spoiler because I know the topic can be a trigger for many. Even though it was a childhood away, I didn't know if I might be able to handle it. But it's what happens next for her that made me feel inspired to get the book. The description for the book reads, When Nora Seed finds herself in the Midnight Library, she has a chance to make things right. Up until now, her life has been full of misery and regret. She feels she had let everyone down, including herself. But things are about to change. The books in the Midnight Library enable Nora to live as if she had done things differently. With the help of an old friend, she can now undo every one of her regrets as she tries to work out her perfect life. But things aren't always what she imagined they'd be, and soon her choices place the library and herself in extreme danger. Before time runs out, she must answer the ultimate question, what is the best way to live? I think this book is lowest on my list to read because I'm a little afraid to read it, but I think it should be one that I prioritize. It feels to fit the energy of my own own your journey journey because part of that journey is owning the life choices and lessons from the past and accepting that they are what they are, but we can move forward. It will be interesting to see her what if moments because I do have quite a few myself. Decisions made with other individuals' best interest in mind instead of my own. Decisions that can't be undone. The final bookish book that I purchased is my first purchase of a classic writer, Jane Austen. I will admit, while I may have read Jane Austen in high school, I honestly don't remember, but I have seen most of the movie adaptations from serious ones to rom-coms, and I feel a connection to her writing and her life. So one of my personal goals is to actually read her works. I was inspired to purchase this particular version of Pride and Prejudice by Darling Desi. The book has actual hidden letters within it, written by the characters to each other. It's like finding an old dusty book in a library and finding love letters tucked within it. And I was too curious to read those letters to not make the purchase. So that's it for the bookish book haul. Now it's time to explore my October reads, but first a fresh pot of tea and another piece of my Bakewell because yum. Most of these are going to be familiar to most of you, but I absolutely had to finally treat myself to Wicked, the life and times of the Wicked Witch of the West. I saw the theater production in Toronto twice, because it was that nice. Actually, I related so much to her, 
and saw parallels between her story and mine with respect to my sister. I actually purchased the hard copy once before as a gift for my sister's youngest who also loves reading and magic. My sister, however, refused to give it to her, which was a shame because she also didn't return it to me and it was a spendy purchase. But now, a decade later, I finally have my own copy and I can't wait to ride my broom back into her world. I just hope it's as good as I remember. The next book I didn't actually know was a book when I first stumbled across the story, which was back in 1993, curled up in the common room of my university dorm. I found a Halloween special called The Halloween Tree. It was an amazing journey that never left me. It was years later that I found out the cartoon was based on a book written in 1972 by Ray Bradbury. It's been on my Amazon wish list since then. Now it's in my home. The Halloween tree will become my October version of Twas the Night Before Christmas. I searched on YouTube and you can actually rent or purchase the cartoon version. Even if you have the book, it's worth seeing. They did an amazing job. If I can figure out how to do a YouTube Live, I would love to do a reading of the Halloween tree on the night before Samhain. Stay posted on my YouTube community and especially Instagram stories for updates on if this can happen. If any of you know how to do lives and are willing to teach this old dog some new tricks, please send me a DM on Instagram. With this next book, I found myself in the same situation as I did with Jane Austen. I've seen movie adaptations and even loved the TV series inspired by it, but have never actually read it, and that would be Sleepy Hollow. This wee little book that I purchased contains a few of his other workings as well, which I also have not yet read. I know, for shame, and I call myself a book lover. Oh well, I've got it now. <laughs> Now for a few new wickedly fun stories that I haven't heard of before, although some of you may have. One is inspired by said Sleepy Hollow, and it's called The Spellbook of Katrina Van Tassel, a story of Sleepy Hollow by Alyssa Palombo. When Ichabod Crane arrives in the spooky little village of Sleepy Hollow, as the new schoolmaster, Katrina Van Tassel is instantly drawn to him. Through their shared love of books and music, they form a friendship that quickly develops into romance. Ichabod knows that as a school teacher of little social standing, he has nothing to offer the wealthy Katrina. Unlike her childhood friend turned enemy, Brom Van Bront, who is the suitor Katrina's father favors. But when romance gives way to passion, Ichabod and Katrina embark on a secret love affair, sneaking away into the woods after dark to be together all while praying they do not catch sight of Sleepy Hollow's legendary Headless Horseman. That is, until All Hallows' Eve, when Ichabod suddenly disappears, leaving Katrina alone and in a perilous position. 
enlisting the help of her friend and rumored witch, Charlotte Jansen, Katrina seeks the truth of Ichabod Crane's disappearance, investigating the forest around Sleepy Hollow using unconventional, often magical, means. What they find forces Katrina to question everything she once knew, and to wonder if the Headless Horseman is perhaps more than just a story after all. Described as marrying forbidden love, devoted friendship, and supernatural with Palumbo's signature passion for music, storytelling, and heartbreaking choices, the spellbook of Katrina Van Tassel enchants with a concoction of love, longing, and loss plucked from the bones of one of our most enduring and haunting legends. I mean, come on, it's an October read if I've ever read one, or at least plan to. <laughs> There are two more books to share, one I have in hand and the other is a pre-order that I want to give you a heads up on. First, how many of you have already read or are planning to read The Diviners by Libba Bray? It's a hefty one for sure and I'm planning on saving it for the winter holidays or maybe January, but the story sounds way too intriguing to pass up. The summary reads, a young woman discovers her mysterious powers could help catch a killer in the first book of the Diviner series, a stunning supernatural historical mystery set in 1920s New York. Evangeline O'Neill has been exiled from her boring old hometown and sent off to bustling streets of New York City, and she is ecstatic. It's 1926, and New York is filled with speakeasies, Zegfeld girls, and rakish pickpockets. The only catch is that she has to live with her Uncle Will and his unhealthy obsession with the occult. Evie worries he'll discover her darkest secrets, a supernatural power that has only brought her trouble so far. When the police find a murdered girl branded with a cryptic symbol and Will is called to the scene, Evie realizes her gift could help catch a serial killer. As Evie jumps headlong into a dance with a murderer, other stories unfurl in the city that never sleeps. And untold to all, something dark and evil has awakened. I don't know about you guys, but I love mysteries, and you add Supernatural into that, and I'm sold. I've seen mixed reviews about the book, but at the end of the day, as with all things, the choices that you make have to be for you and you alone. After all, it's your journey to take. And finally, I have another book on pre-order. The paperback version should be available here in Canada on October 5th, but as you can tell, I have a passion for hardcover books. So my pre-order will not arrive till the end of November. So I think I might hold it as a winter solstice present for myself. But I will share the title and summary with you. The book is called The Lighthouse Witches by C.J. Cook. It is categorized as a gothic thriller and honestly sounds pretty intriguing. Upon the cliffs of a remote Scottish island, Lawn Haven, stands a lighthouse. A lighthouse that has weathered more than storms. Mysterious and terrible events have happened on this island. It started with a witch hunt. Now centuries later, islanders are vanishing without explanation. Coincidence or curse? Liv Stay flees to the island with her three daughters in search of a home. She doesn't believe in witches or dark omens or hauntings, but within months, her daughter Luna will be the only one of them left. 20 years later, Luna is drawn back to the place her family vanished. As the last sister left, it's up to her to find out the truth. But what really happened at the lighthouse all those years ago? I personally am really curious to find out. <laughs> I'm also curious to know if you've read any of these books. If yes, do you have a favorite among them? And if you haven't, have any piqued your interest and are now on your Amazon wish list? Well, my friends, I'm going to leave you here because honestly, I just want to read one more chapter. Till next time, sweet dreams and happy reading.